If you want to get started programming microcontrollers, Arduino is usually the way to go, but it's not always friendly for beginners. Today, we'll learn to program an ESP8266 using MicroPython on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. When you're first getting started learning to program a microcontroller like this ESP8266, it might be a little daunting to learn that the most supported language is Arduino, which is based on C++. And this is not always the easiest language for a beginner to learn. Now that's because I compare Arduino to maybe a teacher who's going to slap you on the wrist for using the wrong syntax before actually helping you. And Python is more like your friend who's listening to your dr drunk screaming and just trying to figure out what the hell you want and help you out however they can. Now, for people learning Python, the simplicity and power is really liberating, and it's a little disappointing to know that it's not well supported on a microcontroller like this. However, thanks to two awesome projects, CircuitPython and MicroPython, it is actually supported, and you can implement a number of the different functionalities of Python on a small platform like this. Now, if you want to follow along, you can check out the Nullbyte article in the description. And there's more product information there, too, if you want to pick these up, because they run between $3 and $12, depending on which one you want to get. If you have any trouble, you can also check out the article for any troubleshooting. So let's get started. Now, we're going to go ahead and go to micropython.org slash download. And you can see here that we have different firmware for different devices. I'm going to go ahead and download the one, the most recent one here for the ESP8266. And you can see that I've downloaded it into my downloads folder. Now, we're going to use an ESP tool to actually first erase the board and then flash it. And if you have anything that you want to keep on there, then obviously I hope you have it backed up because the next command will actually be to flash it and make sure that there's nothing there before we upload our firmware. Now, there also is the matter of being able to actually detect where our board is in terms of this serial interface. So if you have no idea where that is, it can be a little frustrating to poke around your system trying to find out where the heck this is connected after you plugged it in and looked for something to pop up. In general, it won't. And in fact, depending on the board you're using, you might need to install a firmware driver in order to make sure that you're, you can communicate with the chip that manages communication between the board and your computer. So if you're using one of these cheap D1 minis like I am, you might need to download the uh, appropriate drivers to talk to it first. So once you have done that, I'm using a Mac OS system, but there are equivalent commands in Linux that you can run to actually see all the different things that are connected to your serial port. And here I'm going to run ls slash dev slash cu dot asterisk. And here we can see there's a bunch of different things. And if I really want to see what exactly is the correct thing, I can unplug my board for a second, press up, run the command again, and I can see that I no longer see the uh, WCHU serial 141420, uh, and I don't see this other one over here too. Now, in my experience, the one that starts with a WC is the correct one to select, and you won't be able to upload to the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this back in. And you can see that I actually have some code running on this. I'm going to be erasing this during some of my first commands using the ESP tool. All right. So what we need to do is first install the ESP tool. And the ESP tool can be installed via a pip3 install. Uh, and once you have it, we'll need to run the following command, which will be to actually flash it. Here we go. ESP uh, tool.py, the port, which we'll need to now select the proper port. I'm going to go here and grab it. And I'm going to go over to the example here and replace it with where our actual serial port is. Run it. And you can see it's no longer running my program. It is erasing flash. And we should be able, let me enlarge this, and we should be able to see that uh, the chip erase has been completed successfully. All right, so now this is a blank slate. It has no instructions and it doesn't know what to do. So what we're gonna do is actually go ahead and flash this firmware. So I'm gonna take the firmware I downloaded before and I'm going to first get the location of that from Finder. It's going to be in downloads right there. So I'm going to drop that here. And then the second thing we need to do is specify the serial location. So we'll go back and make sure that that's set to the one that we found. 
and we'll see if we're able to successfully flash this binary, which will allow us to upload our Python programs and communicate with the read evaluate print loop. Oops, that's not what I wanted. That's a different message. Here we go. All right, so it's uploading and writing to the ESP. We can see the little light is flashing on it. And as soon as it's done, I'll enlarge this too, uh, we should be able to start communicating. Now, how do we communicate with this chip uh, and how is it different from Arduino? Well, in Arduino, you have to compile your code, you send it to the chip and then it runs it. And if it doesn't work, then you can kind of maybe see on serial what's going on, but there's a lot really, there's really not a lot of information to let you know what's going on on the chip. You really have to just, it's kind of fire and forget and then you see what happens. Now, MicroPython is different. It will actually allow us to communicate in real time. And we can use what's called the print evaluate uh, uh, loop to, be able to put in Python code and see what it does in real time. So I'm going to here use the screen command and screen is a great tool in Linux and Mac OS to be able to handle multiple telnet or SSH sessions. And we're going to be using the serial port that we used before along with a broad rate of 115200. Uh, 115200. And if you get that wrong, you will get a bunch of hot garbage that doesn't mean anything, but is very pretty, uh, but it won't let you program anything. So let's go ahead and see if this works. Uh, so it looks like uh, this has actually changed since I last run it. So I'm going to go ahead and get the new serial port by doing ls dev su. And here I have it. And there we go. So this is Python. Um, this is a, uh, effectively, you can think of it as like a Python 3 uh, interpreter. I can type uh, message equals hello world, and then print message. And that is all on this little microcontroller. All right, well, that's pretty cool. That means we can now put code in here. And unlike a Python program running on our computer, we can do things like actually deal with output pins. And one thing I particularly like about Python is that we can do this in one line, which is super, super cool. So if you want to understand how to do this, I'm going to pull up another one of my programs, which we will actually flash a little bit later. It's a tiny bit more complicated, but we'll actually borrow from it. Now, here you can see this is the program I'm going to upload later. And this program is designed to simply pulse the pins up and down. I've connected pins 0, 2, and 4 to different LEDs, so red, green, and blue. And what this is designed to do is bring each one up one by one in a loop, all the way from 0 to 255, which in the analog scale is bringing it all the way, almost all the way up to where I am comfortable with it not being burnt out. So it's going to go all the way up, all the way down for each one of these three colors. And our goal is going to be putting all this code onto the ESP without needing to run it line by line. So to actually go ahead and pulse this LED, let me go ahead and pull up a sample program I wrote. So in this program, we can see some of the basic things we need to run before this will understand what we're talking about. And since we want to address the pins, we first need to import pin and time, which will allow us to do both interaction with the machine pins and delays that'll allow us to make things visible because the machine runs very fast. And if we don't include delays, then it'll turn on and off before we can actually see it. So first we can see that we can successfully import pin. I'm going to import time. Looks like that worked too. And then I'm also going to, well, I'm not going to do a touchpad. Originally, this is something to work with the capacitive uh, pins on the ESP32, but instead I'm just going to keep this very simple. So what we need to do is define a pin that's going to be an output pin. And here, if I want to take this basic code, what I'm going to say is pin, which is going to be the variable name for our pin, equals pin, let's say, one of our ones that we have set uh, with the LED, so I'll put pin zero. And one thing to be very careful, you should look up the data sheet and the, the diagram for your board, because if you select the TX or RX pins, then you will freeze it uh, because it can't send or receive and it will not work anymore. So I double checked and I'm connected to actually do pin two. And we're going to set that pin to out with pin dot out. Now, if I imported my libraries correctly, then this should work. And if not, then it will warn me that I still need to import pin because it doesn't know what I mean. There, 
All right, so we've pet, we've set pin two to output, and now we're going to do the truly beautiful thing, which is actually turning on a LED with Python 3, or with uh, MicroPython. So let's go ahead and try that. So we're going to type pin dot on, and then close it. And there we go, it turned on, one line. Really hard to do this with Arduino. And we can actually do this whole import and assignment in one line too. Now, if we want to blink it, we can just say, let's see, uh, sleep time.sleep one to create a delay. And then after that, pin dot off. And we can put this in a nice loop to go ahead and do it automatically for us. But as you can see, this gets a little bit tiresome to run commands one by one. If you really want to make something more effective, you're going to have to actually use another tool called Ampy to upload a program to the ESP. Now there is a cutout here where if you have a program running continuously, it won't be able to enter the correct loop, but we're gonna go ahead and try to upload something using Ampy. And the correct way to install it is to just do a pip3 install Adafruit Ampy, just like you see here. Now, once you have this, we'll still need to know the information about the serial port that we're connected to. So let me enlarge this a little bit. What we'll need to do is first take the serial port, which is right here, put it into our ampy command. And this ampy command is going to upload my fades.py program with the put command and name it main.py. Now main.py is a specific file on your MicroPython system that will run after boot.py. And you can put anything here that you want because it'll make it basically run for one time and one time only after boot.py is done. Now I put a while true loop in here, so it's going to run forever. And this will cause a lot of problems when I want to upload, upload something later. But I'll cover that in the troubleshooting section of this. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this and see if it works. And we have fail to access. So let's go ahead and again, sometimes this will just need me to exit. So if you need to get out of a uh, screen, you can press control A and K for kill. I'll press Y to confirm. Let's see if this now can work. And after a second, there we go. So I'm going to press the button on the device now and see if it restarts and starts booting my program. And there we go. We have successfully uploaded Python code into this microcontroller from the command line using Ampy. Now, here's where I'm going to get into troubleshooting, and there's not too many problems with this, but if you find yourself unable to upload anything and Ampy is simply not working, there is two things you can do. Now, one is to actually go into this text file in pyboard.py in your Ampy install and fix a small file that requires a delay. And you can read more about this on the Nullbyte article to see exactly what I'm talking about because I don't want to go too far into it. But trust me when I say that going in and fixing that is one thing that will help if you're having some sort of issue connecting with Ampy. Now, the second is this. If you need to access this and there's no other way in. Let's say you try to get in via screen, you get all this nonsense, you press control C, and then here you go, you have a shell. Now, what you need to do is delete the file that's causing the problem, which is main.py. So first type import OS, and then you can use these different commands, such as os.remove, to get rid of the file that's causing the issue. So here I'm just gonna paste in os.remove, and then main.py. And just like that, if I press the button again, main.py is gone, and we should no longer see our code cycling through, it's just a static LED. And just like that, we've been able to upload our first piece of code to this ESP8266 and troubleshoot any issues we had while doing it. MicroPython is a fun and incredibly simple language to get started programming an ESP8266 in. However, it is not a direct replacement for Arduino. And that's because not as many people have had their problems solved online with MicroPython as with Arduino. So it's a lot more likely that you'll encounter a problem where you're the only one that's had it, or at least the only one that's tried to search for it online. Now, with that being said, I wouldn't launch into a really big project in MicroPython, but for getting started learning how to code and using Python on a fun and exciting and most importantly, cheap platform, MicroPython is amazing. Now, if you want to check this out, you can look at the link in the description and find more product information on the Nullbyte article. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can hit me up on Twitter at Cody Kinsey. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.